I think that when you see him in person and you see the, how him and I are together, it's going to make you feel better about the relationship. It's going to make you feel better about the relationship. It's going to make you feel better about the relationship. You know, I did not even talk to my family about this. You know wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. So Muhammad doesn't even know? Oh, my God. If Kim was hoping that this trip would bring Jamal and Usman closer together, I think that plan may have just backfired. This is the first time that Jamal is meeting his future stepfather face to face. And it's safe to say he's far from impressed. Not good. You know, like in, <laughs> I thought your father is here. Knew, though. That's just the tip of the iceberg, Jamal. There's a whole lot more that we're about to unpack. So we join Kim and Jamal on this episode as they're packing their suitcases, getting ready to go to Nigeria. Now, this trip is important for two reasons. Firstly, Jamal will be meeting Usman in person for the very first time. How are you feeling? I'm so excited to see Usman. <laughs> I feel like you, um, it was important for you and him to meet in person. Yeah. Just don't fight him. No, I never plan on fighting him. I just hope he's himself and he doesn't try to do too much because I'll see right through that. And secondly, the other reason this trip is so important is because they're going to meet the child Usman wants to adopt. The main reason for my trip is to find out more about this adoption thing because it's a lot to think about. But while it may be a lot to think about, it appears she has indeed been giving it a lot of thought because initially she was very shocked and hesitant about adopting. Whereas now she still has her questions, but she appears a lot more open to the idea. The idea of adopting Usman's brother's child is totally different. I'm trying to have a little more of an open mind. But the most important thing is that Muhammad and his wife, and especially Mahadi, they're all okay with this. I'll take Kim's words on face value here. You've got to hope that she really means what she says. Although I have my reservations about how okay with it a three-year-old child will be being taken away from his mum and dad. I want to make sure that like, if we do decide to do this and adopt this little beautiful boy, I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. I'm not doing it to keep Usman. With that being said, I did notice that her suitcase is filled with gifts for little Mahadi. Let's hope they don't interpret that the wrong way. It's not a bribe. That, that is so not a so, bribe. At least Kim knows that if things do go badly, Jamal will have her back, which is more than could be said for Usman last time around. Got your back. Mm, mm. Ow. Kim also makes it clear that without Jamal's support, it will be difficult, not impossible, but difficult for her to go ahead with the adoption. This child will be in Jamal's life too. And I want to have Jamal's acceptance because I really don't know if I could raise a child in an environment where Jamal is against it. However, Jamal seems very uneasy about the prospect of having a potential future adopted stepbrother. So you're gonna see the child on this trip? Yeah, we're gonna see him. I have to meet the kid too? I would like you to. I really don't know. That's so weird to me when I think about it. And quite right too, Jamal. The whole thing is very weird. Fortunately, this time around, Kim appears to have learnt from her past experience. We all remember how much misunderstanding there was when it came to the whole second wife issue. She was sure she was going to be the favourite superior first wife, only to find out she actually didn't know as much as she thought she did. I'm excited to see him, but I, sometimes with, with things with Usman, I need to talk to him face to face. As we'll soon see, those words turn out to be very accurate. Now, as excited as Kim is to be going back to Nigeria, it's safe to say that Jamal isn't exactly Usman's biggest fan. We have a, we have a lot of challenges, you know? We have a lot of And Usman knows this. In fact, he realises he's going to have to start a charm offensive and put in extra effort in order to win Jamal over. I don't think... I didn't say he hit me, but I don't think he likes me. I've never met Jamal in person, and I think he's in doubt because he wants to protect his mom. Both Kim and Usman hope that when Jamal gets to see how they really are together, it will ease any fears he may have. So I'm super nervous. I am hoping that Jamal has like a really good impression about me, and also he witnessed how the relationship between me and his mom is. I think that when you see him in person and you see the how him and I are together, it's gonna make you feel better about the relationship, you know? 
But when Usman greets Kim and Jamal at the airport, seeing how they are together in person, at least initially, has the opposite effect. This is awkward, and poor Jamal doesn't know where to look. Hi, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and just to ramp up the awkwardness even more, it doesn't help that Usman is staring directly at Jamal while hugging and kissing his mum. I know my mom wants my support, but I don't really trust Usman. Oh my god. I feel like I threw up in my mouth. The irony here is that Kim is convinced she'll be able to tell if Jamal doesn't like Usman. How? What will be the telltale sign? <laughs> well, it will be Jamal's looks and his demeanor. I know my son pretty well, and I will know if he likes Usman or not. It'll be the looks he gives him, it'll be his whole stance and just Jamal's persona. Yet she totally missed all of Jamal's looks. Just like she also totally missed the fact that Usman wasn't wearing an engagement ring. I guess her mind must have been on other matters, because the second they get to their hotel, Kim immediately spots there might be a problem. Jamal's bedroom is rather close. That kind of tells us where her priorities lie and what's on her mind, don't you think? Oh, he's right across from us. What? You're right here. Okay, it's too no fun. It's all our right. room's right there. But it's, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, I'm not gonna be at the door, like. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, I'm glad Jamal can take that so well, especially with Usman's little laugh. Okay. Because the idea of his mum and Usman making nocturnal noises, shall we say, is enough to leave a bad impression on anyone. Perhaps that might explain why later on that evening, while they're sat in Kim and Usman's hotel room having dinner, this is one of the things that Jamal asks. Do y'all have like a language, a secret language, y'all speak? Uh, we Which have weird, like, but things. Yeah, we have like signal signs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like signal. the eyes? Yes. Yeah. That's I can that. read, I can read all that. Interesting. Now, we'll come back to exactly how well Jamal can read the signs in a second. But I also thought it was very telling and very interesting how just the act of sitting and having dinner together is quite an important milestone for Jamal. It just kind of hit me. I'm like, I don't know the last time I've sat with you and like a boyfriend or fiance or anything. And we all just like ate together, you know, like a family. That says a lot about Kim's past relationships. I guess by that metric, Usman isn't so bad. Usman is very keen to point out to Jamal that he's a good person. And his reasoning is quite funny. The only thing that bothers me a lot is like, you know, like I've been with her for like a year plus. If I'm not a good person, there is no how she can hide it for you for a year. What he seems to have missed here is the fact that it hasn't been hidden from Jamal. Jamal's opinion about Usman has been formed based on what he's seen himself and what his mum has told him. With that being said, let's go back to the claim that Jamal made about being able to read people. This is something he's very sure about. He's made this claim on numerous occasions in this episode. I don't really want Usman to prove himself to me. I just want him to be himself. Because I'll notice if he's trying too hard. You know, I can read a room really well. But I think his confidence is a little misplaced. He might not be as good as he thinks he is. You see, when Usman confronts the elephant in the room and says straight to Jamal's face, I feel like you do like me. I'm her son, you know? Like, I've seen her get screwed over by so many men. Usman explains that he's got a plan to win Jamal over. What might this plan entail? Being on his best behavior, perhaps? Making sure that Kim is taken care of? Well, no, actually. It's a lot simpler than that. All it takes to win Jamal over seems to be a gift. Obviously, it would be better if, if we got along. So I'm going to get you a gift. What? Yeah. Yeah, I want to give him a gift. <laughs> You got him a gift? Yeah. Jamal immediately gets excited and giddy at the thought of receiving a gift. And when Usman finally reveals what that gift is, it's as if all of Jamal's fears completely evaporate. No way, bro. <laughs> Usman, no way, dude. Yes. No way. <laughs> like, a whole PS5, bro. 
I don't even know what to say. For someone who was telling us all how good he is at reading people, Jamal seems to have fallen for the oldest trick in the book. You see, Usman reveals that the reason he bought Jamal a PS5 is because he has a lot of power in my relationship with Kimbali. And I am not having him to come and try to control me or control his mom while I'm with her. Jamal appears to have missed the fact that this gift is being given to him as a form of manipulation. And it's kind of cool how like my mom got him one, then he gets me one. It's kind of like a full circle. Me and Usman do have potential to, you know, actually develop some kind of positive relationship. Now, I've seen a lot of speculation and people claiming that this PS5 that Usman bought for Jamal might just be a re-gifting of the PS5 Kim initially bought for Usman, but I'm not convinced that that's actually the case. We can see from this footage that Usman filmed and recently shared on social media that the PlayStation appears to be brand new. It has all of the plastic wrapping that you'd expect for a new PlayStation. Plus, I think it does Jamal a huge disservice to assume he wouldn't realise that it's second hand. But at the very least, the gift appears to have broken the ice between Jamal and Usman. And so, having ended on that positive note, we join them again the next morning as Usman takes Jamal and Kim to meet up with his friends. From the questions that Jamal asks, it feels like he's warmed to Usman. Instead of automatically taking his mum's side, he's now asking if she may have been in the wrong. Today I'm bringing my friends, KB and Giant. Where'd you meet them at, Mo? Remember I told you I threw, I threw a milkshake at Usman? Great first impression. You think you overreacted? Yes, I overreacted. It's a small comment, but it marks a significant change in Jamal's attitude. And Usman and Jamal's friendship appears to strengthen as a bond over a game of archery. It is really cool to just sit there and watch Jamal hang out with Usman and his friends. After their game, they all sit around the table and discuss Usman and Kim's relationship. Now that Usman has found out he can't have a second wife, at least not if he wants a green card, the friends question how he's going to have a child. So wait, wait, what about the child? I'm talking about having the uh, child. I was thinking instead of having a second wife, I have a brother who has children. And Usman explains that one of his brother Mohammed's children, three-year-old Mahadi, is a child Usman feels particularly close to. There's one called Mahadi, and I love him so much. So I was like, why not adopt him as my son? Take care of him, and he'll be my son forever. Ah, easy as that. Why don't I just take him and he'll be mine and I love him, so he may as well be my son. Usman talks about this very serious issue so casually. This, understandably, concerns Kim. It's not just about him, this is my, will be my marriage too, and I have to make sure I'm okay with everything. Just because I love you doesn't mean I'm just going to accept everything. Now, at this point, we start to see some very significant cultural differences. We have a different ideology and different life experience. Because while Kim and Jamal have lots of questions about the adoption and whether or not it's normal, Usman's friends can't quite understand why Kim's being so cautious. They think she should be thankful to adopt. He do a big sacrifice to cancel his, to marry his second wife. I expect Kimbali to be so happy about this new decision to adopt a child. And that's when Usman reveals he hasn't even spoken to his brother yet about the possibility of adopting his child. You know, I did not even talk to my family about this. You know my wife? Wait, 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 wait. So Muhammad doesn't even know? Now, again, this might be a cultural issue because neither of the friends nor Usman seem to think that this is a big deal. He know or he didn't know, it doesn't matter. Oh my God. No, no, no. Listen, babe, why are you worried? This is not, sh this is not something for you to be stressed out. But Kim and Jamal, on the other hand, well, they were under the impression that having flown to Nigeria to discuss the adoption, Muhammad was already on board. I thought you already told them that Usman, why do you always do this to me? I feel totally blindsided right now. Usman told me a half story. What was it she said in the taxi on the way here? It's always best to speak to Usman face to face. And that realization has just reminded Jamal of why he didn't like Usman in the first place. My mom 
trust him for his word, but like I'll trust you when I start seeing his actions match his words. And this is another thing that takes me a step back towards trusting him. So here's the question. Is Usman being deceptive or is this really just a cultural difference? Based on the preview to the next episode and the way that Muhammad reacts, I'd suggest it's probably not down to the culture. We were thinking if you can give us Mahadi to adopt him as our child. Yeah? If anything, the fact that Usman hasn't even spoken with Mohammed before coming up with a plan to adopt just shows how arrogant Usman is. He thinks so highly of himself that he just assumes his brother will be okay to just give him his son. Nothing about that feels like Usman has the boy's best interests at heart, does it?